All right, so today I want to talk about the Boston Celtics because although they have a 6-3 record, they're fourth in the Eastern Conference, only a game out from the number one seed in this early season stage of this year, and all things seem to be going pretty well for them. You know, they're playing well, they still have Kemba rehabbing, ready to come back from injury and give a boost to this offense, but there's still one big issue just just keeps on annoying me when it comes to watching this team every night. And that one thing is that the Celtics starting lineup is one of the worst in the NBA to start the season. And this lineup that I'm speaking about, in case you are unaware, it uses Marcus Smart at the one, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum play the two and three and are the wings, and then they use Daniel Tice at the four and Tristan Thompson at the five, serving as a double big lineup that uses two centers, although Daniel Tice he can stretch the floor a little bit, so I, I still classify him as a center for the most part because he's still not a consistent knockdown shooter, but yeah, that is the lineup I'm talking about in case you were unaware. Not only has this lineup started in seven of their first nine games, as a few players have been out with injuries, but it's also logged the most minutes of all five-man lineups for Boston at 84 minutes, which is 64 more than the next highest used lineup. And while you might be wondering, you know, the Celtics are 6-3, and three. how can one starting lineup, a lineup that doesn't even play for the entire game at a time, you know, how can this be such a bad thing? And I'll tell you, the reason why this is such a bad thing is, again, this is the most used five-man lineup by Boston by far in this early portion of the season, and this lineup has a net rating of negative 13.2, which is not good. Celtics fans may be wondering why this team consistently underperforms in the first and third quarters, and this lineup is a big reason why, because again, it's the starting lineup, so they get most of their minutes at the start of the first and start of the third quarter, and because the lineup isn't good, it leaves the Celtics playing from behind most of the time, which is a common trend over these past couple of years that the Celtics love to play on but again it's not something that is good if you want to be a winning team most of the time and so far despite the numerous games where this lineup has just been simply outplayed by opposing teams brad stevens for some reason remains very prideful in continuing to start this lineup no matter again how bad they've been or how much the fans just continue to absolutely slander this starting unit but with some fresh news early this morning we found that robert williams tested positive for the covid virus meaning that he is going to have to isolate and quarantine for at least seven days and through the contact tracing he also got to tristan thompson and grant williams as well so those two will also have to quarantine for seven days and bam just like that two centers on this roster who have been getting plenty of run so far this season are now unavailable for the next week and brad stevens will finally be forced to start a new lineup obviously that is assuming that he doesn't pull a fast one on us and give us a daniel tice taco fall starting front court which although it'd be very fun and i'd love to see it for taco this just simply would not be good for the boston celtics in terms of winning games now luckily daniel tice was not a part of this whole COVID issue so the celtics do at least have one starting caliber center remaining on their roster so over these next few games, I would certainly expect uh, Brad Stevens to stick to a pretty normal starting lineup with Smart, Brown, Tatum, and Tice remaining in it. But as for the fifth spot, I think there are plenty of guys who could see an opportunity to get a chance to get a starting look on this team. We've already seen Brad give a chance to Tremont Waters, a career-long G League guy who has been on and off on this Celtics roster and has never really had a great time in the NBA, although Brad, again, gave him a chance in a starting lineup to go out and prove himself. And this just shows the type of extents Brad will go to in terms of switching up his rotations. Although I would assume that to start, we'll probably see Jeff Teague in a more traditional starting five type of lineup, just throw Jeff Teague as the fifth guy in there. But one player I would absolutely love to see get a few opportunities to start is the rookie Peyton Pritchard. The man's only played nine games in his NBA career, and it's, it's, just, it's just amazing how much I already trust them to be on the court at the end of games for the Celtics, and I would, I would trust them with my life, honestly. That is that is how much I trust this man, Peyton Pritchard, or P-Rabbit, or 8 Mile, or Fast PP, whatever you want to call him. But whatever Brad decides to go with, it'll definitely be interesting to see him hopefully get these rotations and lineups a little bit more figured out as he'll have some more chances to experiment and see exactly what he has with the rest of this roster. Lineup issues aside though, this whole COVID issue that is becoming a thing in the Boston locker room 
isn't exactly coming at a great time as like I said Robert Williams was the only one to test positive and it's coming in the middle of what looks like it's going to be a breakout year for him. While box scores will only show that he's averaging 6 points and 6 rebounds to go with 2.5 stocks per game in 16 minutes a game, ask any Celtics fan and they will say that they have been very happy with what they've seen from Robert Williams so far this season, and the lineup numbers back it up even further. If you look and sort through all Celtics 5-man lineups that have played at least 5 minutes this season, You'll find uh, Robert Williams is in five of the top six in terms of net rating, so he definitely has a positive impact on this roster to start the year. So hopefully for Boston's sake, he can get healthy and get back on the court as soon as possible, because although Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum have been absolutely amazing as a duo to start the season, the Celtics team isn't exactly going to go far if the rest of the supporting cast isn't able to hold their own and provide for this team as well. And speaking of Tatum and Brown, can they get some love on these MVP race ladder things that have been coming out over the past couple of hours from these other you know from all these NBA sites I mean NBA.com they released a top 10 for their current MVP race Jason Tatum was tied at eighth with Demonte Sabonis which don't even I don't, I don't how do you even have a tie on an MVP ladder that makes absolutely no sense to me it's we're 10 games in not even so just make one guy eighth make one guy ninth but Anyway, yeah, Tatum was 8th, tied for 8th, Jalen Brown was an honorable mention, and then if you look at the basketball reference top 10, neither of them even made the cut. And again, that's despite the Celtics only being one game behind the leading 76ers in the Eastern Conference, and the fact that Tatum is averaging 26, 7, and 4 on 46, 45, 88 shooting splits, while Jalen Brown is averaging 26, 5, and 3 on 55, 41, 73 shooting splits. And again, they've just been playing so well. They dropped 30 points back to back with ease. They've been doing it on great efficiency as they're both close to being 50, 40, 90 players, which is absurd if you really think about it. And I honestly just hope that over this next week, while players are missing from their lineups and they just have a huge hole in their rotations, that Brown and Tatum can keep this up and finally get some recognition that they deserve so far this year. But anyway, returning back to my main point, you know, again, we never want to see injuries or players missing time in this league, and this is a weird time with COVID running rampant, and it was obvious that something like this was going to happen at some point, but again, hopefully the Celtics can get through this. But more importantly, I hope this sparks some sort of intuition inside of Brad Stevens to finally get these lineups and rotations figured out, get some, just get some better starting lineups in there, take this time to experiment, and overall just get some help for Tatum and Brown because at some point this season you're not going to be able to rely on them to go out and score 60 points combined every night. You're going to need production from other guys on this roster if the Celtics team wants to be a true contender at the end of the season. But that will do it for this video. Uh, drop your comments down below on what you think about the Celtics and their current lineup scenarios. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed this video or enjoyed this type of content. And as always, most importantly, thank you for watching.